Today I'm going to talk to you about some experiments, some mad sciences I've been doing using JavaScript and a lot of stuff. And I hope you really, really like this content because it was a, a real effort to create everything here. So to get started, everything that I'm going to show you today is already on, on, online. So after all the talk, I'm going to show you some links so you can go there. But please, if you can, Take a picture of this talk, mention the event, mention myself, because this helps us a lot with the work we've been doing. All right. I'm so excited. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about Node.js, and the Node.js creator is here, the bun, and so on. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Well, first of all, I've been doing a lot of other experiments. I'm, I was trying to re-implement Node.js, re-implementing WebSockets, re-implementing a code coverage too. So I've been making a lot of specific questions. So I'm very curious. And all these tutorials are there, so you can find it as well. Well, all these experiments started when I, uh, I started asking myself, well, do I really know what is Node.js? So I started researching, and I figured some posts were telling that V8 does one thing, LibUV does another, JavaScript is another role, and sometimes one post was uh, controversial to another. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should learn more, maybe I should understand better. So I don't really know how it's going behind the scenes, how it's really working. So I started researching a bit, and I figured out there's no content about this. No one has ever done like recreating the whole stuff, compiling the whole libraries. But I started researching on the Node.js websites, and those links helped a lot to learn how the event loop, how the concurrency module in Node.js was working. But still, I wanted more. So that's why I created this tutorial. This is a full step-by-step -step tutorial, which is this talk is based. So this talk is going to be a lot of highlights because I cannot show all the hands-on right here, OK? So you can try out later. Just a disclaimer. Before we go on, uh, I'm going to tell you everything here is part of my research, OK? I'm not a C++ developer. You might see a lot of like bad practices right there, but it's something that I was enjoying and doing. Also, this is part of my own research. As I tell you, there is no content on the internet. So I started asking some friends, looking at the source code, and getting some assumptions. And just a heads out, JS runtimers our authors are amazing. I started to give more value to them as I saw how complex is it behind the scenes so we are able to use JavaScript in there. All right, let's go to the fun part, right? So let's understand the magic behind the Node.js. So everything here, I did like a Git pod. I did all the environment for you right there. It's binaries and a lot of stuff that you can start using right away. To get started, I was like, what if I go to the Node.js repo and try finding how Ryan Dahl was doing this stuff? So I found out a lot of files, and I found out, like, oh, maybe I should try reproducing this. But if you see, it's 14 years ago. Like, a lot of tools, it's not even working anymore. But still, has anyone seen this website before? No one. This is so nice. This was the first version released of the Node.js. It's the V1, V001. And you can see there was no console.log back then. It was puts. <laughs> very nice. All right. I know that this is a very complex subject, so I, I won't make you sleep right here, OK? So I tried to split the main components so you can understand each individual role. If you are trying to search for jobs, this is kind of cool to tell on an interview. So first of all, we're going to talk about V8. V8 is grammar. It's the JavaScript data types. It's how JavaScript is interpreted, which means a class, a variable, a data type, it's all on V8. We also have the libuv. Libuv is the async thing that we, we've been listing a lot. But just uh, think of it as a while true asking 
for new events, and if so, if there are any pain events, it's going to dispatch them all, and you can start uh, uh, receiving more data and so on. And here, for me, is the mind-blowing part, the C++ bridge. So when you try finding, you're going to realize Node.js is almost everything on C++. I'm going to try a magic with you, trying to implement a new feature on the V8 side. So let's take a look at our JS code. When you're starting using the V8 from scratch, our context, our global disk is empty. So there's nothing there that we can use. But I'm going to try implementing the print function. Print doesn't exist in JavaScript, all right? So if I want to be able to execute this function from the JavaScript side, this must be on the V8. So using the C++ bridge, I'm going to create a, a, a print function on C++, and then I'm going to bind it to the context. See, I would say, every time I see this string, I'm going to call this C++ function. Behind the scenes, V8 is like the evolve, right? It's evaluating everything that you want. OK, let's go, let's go try uh, doing something harder. A set timeout function. A set, a set timeout function is something that is asynchronous. It depends on the environment. So we can use the UV start, which is libuv functions. We do exactly the same thing. We map this string to this C++ function, and then it's already available on the V8. I'll tell you, this was the part for me like, Oh my god, this is why this is so good, because it's extensible, right? Most of the JS runtimes follow the same idea. They are extending the, the JavaScript runtime environment and doing a lot of cool stuff. So right here, I'm going to try doing some experiment using our, our JavaScript code. So here, I can see uh, index.js file, and here's the whole project in C++. So if you go there, we're going to take a look of the workflow, how it's working. First of all, I have to read a file, OK? As I was telling you, the index.js file is just a string in the end. I'm going to grab this file, and then I'm going to use compile. So the compile will grab all the string and transform to C++ instances. And after that, we're going to go and see the run, the actual execution behind it. And then we have our wait for events. So we, we just uh, evo evaluate all the code, and then we schedule and wait for events. That's why you're true, I was telling you. And just a matter of curiosity, if you go to the source code, you're going to see the read file from C++. So I'm not using libuv here, because the entry point, I just need the string, so I don't want to wait, or don't need to wait for any other process. All right, to make this project, I spent a month trying to create some structure there so we can reuse it, and I had to compile the V8 library, which is in C++, and the libuv, which is in C. So you can see all the headers there. So if you're not C++ developer, don't, <laughs> neither do I, right? So you can just take a look at the structure. This is a, a very nice workaround. You could see I was using a libuv, oops. I was using basically Node.mon to create all the stuff there, right? So let's just jump a bit so you can see the, the node module. So I don't know anything about the tooling on the JavaScript or on the C++ side. So I was like, what if I just use Nodemon to wait for any changes and then refresh our application? So I use make to run all the steps from my configuration file. It generates a binary, and then I can execute a JavaScript file, OK? First of all, what happens if we try calling the console.log? It was the first thing I was trying to do there, and I honestly was struggling a lot. So if you run console.log, we could see in the logs, nothing happens, right? I was like, why is not happening? However, if I get the print function I implemented myself, and I print the console, I could see an object there. And if I try seeing the all keys, they're, they're all there. However, I would say they're just an interface, right? But they are not doing anything. Behind the scenes, set timeout, set interval, and console are not JavaScript. So 
anything that relies on the environment is part of something else. It's actually uh, uh, expanding JavaScript. So if I try using set timeout here, I could see set timeout is not defined. Or what if set interval? Not defined either. Everything that is a, a, a part of it is actually from another uh, uh, working groups. So we can see console, we can see other specifications, but it's not actually like ECMAScript, right? We don't have a, 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 something that runtimes must follow in this case. Well, let's try doing something nicer here. Let's take a look at the print. For me, this was like, oh my god, I'm using printf, which I used on the first day of the university, right? It, it, it's nice to see something so complex and still using something which for me was really uh, primitive. So I have those functions, right? I have the print one, the same idea I used on the, on the, uh, the whole dra drawing I did. So we have a string and then I map to a C++ function. Every function that we have on Node.js is actually uh, uh, instantiated by using this same approach. Now we can check what is JavaScript. So a new date is JavaScript, even though time relies on the environment, right? It's the only exception. Template strings we can use there. We could also use uh, maps. We could use spread operators. Everything is built in on V8. And even promises. Promises are not async operations. They are just wrappers for callbacks to handle us, to help us developers to write better code, okay? Well, let's try doing something more interesting. What about set timeout and set interval? Remember the complexity. I want to schedule a function which is, will be executed in the future, and those variables, that those references, must be there when I have to call them back, and then I have to call back the JavaScript side, okay? This took me a while, my friend. This was really crazy to build it. But let's take a look at the final result. First, I'm going to have a class. Don't, don't, don't pay attention to the C++ side. Let's just see the arguments. So I'm going to grab the slip, the interval, and make sure the, th the, the third uh, argument is a callback function. And then I'm going to create something to store those values so I can execute in the future. And here, I'm creating a timer on the libuv. So I start, I just send, and I, I tell which function is going to be executed in the end. And then I can go to this function and see when the timer has ended. It goes back to C++. I can grab all the context. And then I can generate the result that I'm going to send back to JavaScript and call our callback function. It's crazy to see it, right? It's not. For me, it was like some magic with JavaScript. But in the end, they are just abstracting the whole complexity for us so we can start using what we already know. And then, if you try to look at the UV code, which, which is the while true I told you, we have just the run, and it makes sure all the events is going to be dispatched later. And we follow the same idea. We compile the code, and we wait for new events. And then I'm going to set the timeout exactly the same way I did for the print and other ones. Now, what I told you that uh, promises are JavaScript and not libuv or async operations. I can grab the same function I created that uses a callback. I can make a wrapper and use async await because async await is v8, right? Is part of the language. And one interesting thing, if you go to the first version on the v011, this is how Ryan Dahl had made the first uh, uh, version of it, OK? He was exposing the timers and executing from a JavaScript file and actually adding more components. So we should know that v8, what JavaScript does by default, is, is known by the ECMAScript spec. That's why we have ECMAScript modules to replace like the common JS or the required JS. It makes our lives easier and also the lives of the authors of the other runtimes. OK, we have now a lot of other new runtimes coming, right? The first question I had was like, is that easy to create a runtime? Why do we need a runtime now? 
Node has been there like for almost 10 years. So I started researching, going on their code, and I had some assumptions. First, Dino. If you go to the Dino source code, you're going to see a very similar code that we had in the C++ side written in Rust. He's grabbing a string, compiling it, and executing it. OK? The same idea, exactly the same idea on C++. And then you can see that he's injecting Dino Core, which is extending V8 and injecting more code. Exactly the same interesting idea. OK, what about Bun? Well, Bun is, I would say, more mad science idea because he used JavaScript Core instead of V8, which has no docs. I don't know how he, he has written it, and it's written in Zig. But looking at the whole code, you're going to see the same approach. He's extending the, the, the natural uh, uh, bindings of the, the JavaScript runtime and executing a lot of stuff. So you, from the back, you may be wondering right now, OK, we have a lot, right? Cloudflare workers, uh, uh, Dino, and so stuff. What makes one better than others? This was something that I was wondering, how are they faster or what, what is the, the whole point of creating a new JavaScript runtime? Well, the point is, remember that C++ is the bridge. So there, in Node.js, we have all the modules. This is the print for FS. And what makes one runtime better than others, it's how they handle this whole complexity. So I'm receiving results from the operating system, and I'm trying to ping other services, calling processes, going back and forth with the strings, and we can see how they are making this approach. So Bun claims to be faster because he used better algorithms to write and to execute functions. Nice, isn't it? In my opinion, what makes one better than others is developer experience. Dino has came with like uh, testing native. Uh, they have TypeScript and a lot of stuff to help developers to write code faster. And in my opinion, this matters a lot. But is it a competition? Like, is Dino replace Node? Is Bun going to replace Node or Dino? My opinion is they are going to collaborate with each other. So Jared Summer, who's speaking also in this conference, joined the Node.js uh, organization. Uh, also, Colin Rigg used to work on Dino and has been working in Node.js since the beginning. So they are all collaborating together so we can be benefited. And also, there's a working group so they can share ideas. You saw. In the world of JS runtimes, we don't have ECMAScript, right? Anyone could write C++ functions as they wish. So this is how they would do it. Nice, isn't it? I'm going to see like, oh. If you want to follow more and go deep and try uh, uh, implement your own FS, I strongly recommend the video. There I spent like almost two hours to build this uh, uh, tutorial for you so you can even complement it. OK? All the content I've been teaching you, all the ideas, all the talks, is already on my website. So if you want to go further, study more, you can go there. And actually, I released an ebook about this whole talk as well, so you can go step by step. Before I finish this talk, we have a minute left. So we have a tradition to take a selfie and make uh, the others on the other stage envy, OK? So I'm going to count on three, and I'm going to make some noise, all right? All right. Oh, nice. So let's get started. One, two, three. Thank you so much for having me.